course, in the really early days, people thought there were just four elements. The ancient notion of elements uh, took the form of earth, air, fire, and water. Basically, the thought that the whole world could be composed of these four ingredients in different ways. But then, in the 18th century, chemists began to break things down into uh, smaller pieces, like wind became... Gases like oxygen and hydrogen and nitrogen. And Earth got divided up into things like sulfur, phosphorus, iron. And eventually, chemists got all the way down to the root of it, which was the atom. That's really what an element is. It's a particular kind of atom. The problem was, though, when chemists began to start measuring these atoms, they found that they were all different sizes and types. Like one would be heavy, another would be light. Third one would be really friendly, likes to link up with other atoms, whereas the fourth would be a loner. And they would come in combinations like heavy, friendly, heavy, shy, light, friendly, light, shy. What was the pattern? That was the question. Could they fit all of these differences and similarities into one big schema? Um, Here's where we get to Oliver's hero. The Siberian bigamist, uh, uh, <laughs> as he was called. That would be Dmitry Mendeleev. The great Mendeleev whom we will talk about. Oliver has a black and white picture of him on uh, his kitchen cabinet. Uh, this man is not going to win any any beauty contest. Um, no, no, no he, uh, he looks like a mixture between uh, Rasputin and... Um, uh, who do I mean? Well, you mean he has a big nose, a shaggy, slightly unkempt white beard, a mustache that goes all over the place, piercing eyes, thick eyebrows, and looks like he's in a hunchback position. Generally, if you met him on the sidewalk, you'd probably want to walk around him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't believe in wasting time going to a barber. Let me just ask you, as to the degree of your passion, when you look at this man, do you think he's a beautiful looking guy, or do you see what I see? And I think Mendeleev had a beautiful mind. And when that mind gets on a train, and it was a long, long ride from Irkutsk to Moscow, strange things will happen. Okay, in 1860, uh, around 1860, there were trains going all over Russia, and Mendeleev could afford to take trains. He was often on enormous journeys. And to while away the time, since he couldn't do chemical experiments or whatever, he would take playing cards with the name of various elements, their chemical and physical properties, and he would play what he called chemical solitaire. Sorting them for likeness or sorting uh, them? I'm afraid I, 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 I don't know the details. But you know what we can imagine, right? Sure. So let's just say he's there, sitting there on the train, he's looking out the window, he sees trees made of carbon. Carbon. A lake made of hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen, oxygen. Behind that, a mountain. Mountains, yeah. Made of silica. Silicon. And he's shuffling oh. their properties and their atomic weights in his mind. Wondering. How do these things go together? What's, what's the, the pattern? pattern? And he's shuffling. I'm shuffling. 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 And he did this for years, until one night. This we think is true. In February of 1869, he is said to have had a dream. In his dream, all the atoms of all the elements of all the world, the fat ones, the small ones, the dense ones, the heavy ones, the friendly ones, the shy ones, they all began to dance in his mind. And then they snapped into a grid. He awoke with a vision of the periodic table, which he then wrote on the back of an envelope. The thing about what he wrote on the back of that envelope is that it starts out so simply. Left to right, the atoms just get heavier and heavier and heavier. Heavier, heavier, heavier. heavier. But every so often, and this is what he intuited in his dream, is that while they're getting heavier, there are other traits, like whether they're shy or magnetic or whatever, those traits, oh. Repeat. Periodically change back again. And every time they do, we start a new row. The properties repeat again. <laughs> Out of this simple repeating structure. Very nice. Hush, Mendeleev. You get a table that you can read in a million ways. There are so many ways to read this table. I think I'm going to call this the periodic table. <laughs> that if you use your imagination, you can see yourself in there.